Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. My name is Marie, if you're new, and today's video is going to be about what I wish I knew as an F1. Um, so for those that don't know, I am currently an F2 um, doctor, which is basically the second year of training in the UK. Um, so yeah, before I get into the video, if you can subscribe, I will really appreciate it. Road to 2K um but yeah let's just get into the video um so i have done a year of foundation training which the first thing someone told me was being a doctor is not what you think it's going to be like when you're growing up well at least in the foundation years anyway you're mainly an admin babe and what i mean by that is ward round you're there scribing writing what the consultant has said and the plans and then you're just actioning the plans. And these plans will be booking the scans, calling to vet the scans, calling CT to see if they can get when a, an appointment is available, x-rays, these calling microbiologists about antibiotics, like it's nothing fun. And then you have the list that you need to update and just hand type and just it's long like it's very long and tedious and it's just you're like this is not what i thought it was really going to be um and yeah you realize that you're really only going to learn stuff if when you're on call and it just goes from zero to 100 from normal working days to when you're on call because normal working days like say if you're on surgery you have in my, in my hospital there's four teams you have the upper gi team you have the colorectal team you have the vascular team and you have the urology team so you have all these teams all the registrars all the consultants everyone's there and then you go onto like night on call and it's literally you as the f1 sho and the registrar and that's it and you're looking after all the surgical patients and the sho is the one that's like in a and &E, clarking and stuff so you as the f1 is the one that's covering the whole ward, or like your ward cover so you're covering everything and you're just like rah we went from everyone to just me just like that and it is very overwhelming and nothing can prepare you for that i can see now because i've done a year i'm like i can get through it it's not that bad but like at the time you're literally thinking what is going on because you will have like bleeps going off and our hospital we have something called mobile medic which is just like um, a phone that has like, all the jobs on there as well as well as people bleeping you so you've got all your jobs and the phone just keeps going off it doesn't stop and then you will get a bleep being like i have a patient that's sneezing like six and you're like oh what am i gonna do what am i gonna do and then you'll try and call your sho and that they're busy in a &E. and then like sometimes like you will get i luckily when i was on nights i had a good reg that would come with me so i wasn't on my own but sometimes some people don't have registrars that will come and help them and then it would just be like over the phone and you're just thinking boy like i actually have no idea what i'm going like what's going on and i think that's quite a big theme in f1 it is just vibes in and just seeing how it goes and just learning as you go because most of the time you actually don't know what is going on um but i would say in those instances you're not really actually expected to know because you're literally just starting out especially when it's like first rotation so don't be scared to call for help like call your sho call your registrar like no one's ever going to be mad for you asking for help like at all especially now that i'm an sho i'm just like like i'll tell my phone to feel free to call me like it's not a thing and if i don't know then i will ask the registrar or tell their phone to call the registrar like it's no i ask for help like everyone's gonna ask for help like you're not expected to know everything like medicine is such a broad spectrum of knowledge that you can't know everything and that is why you have different specialities like a surgeon is not gonna know stuff about like 
um, obs and gyne and vice versa which is why like it's okay to ask so don't ever feel like you're on your own even though it can be overwhelming even though it could it can feel like that you are not on your own and bnf and guidelines like my hospital has an intranet that has loads of guidelines like use them no one told me about the guidelines until i was in a and e um but like there's so many guidelines that literally tell you what to do and you kind of feel like okay like you know i'm just following the steps like i know that the patient should be safe um but when you're in these situations like don't forget the basics and like the stuff they tell you in medical school about a to e if you have a news in patients so you know airway breathing circulation disability everything else like you can't go wrong with doing an ate assessment and it's just like basic stuff like don't forget your basic stuff if a patient has a high temperature take blood cultures um or if it's not like take blood cultures and also give paracetamol to try and lower it if it's a fever just stuff like that um but it's stuff that you will learn as you go like don't be upset or frustrated that you don't know stuff straight away like it will come and now having done a year i can say that i've learned a lot and it's just by doing the job and it's something you won't learn in medical school like medical school will not prepare you for what being an f1 doctor is medical school is such a snapshot like where you go on the ward where like as you please you only do the interesting stuff like no one's gonna stay as a medical student to do a discharge letter you'll go to clinics with a consultant and it's stuff like this like you don't see what it's like as an f1 and f1s and f2s and like all the juniors really they're the ones that run like rewards because we're the ones that action the plans and stuff and so you guys like even though it's not the most interesting job um, when you're doing admin stuff it's what helps the patient it's what gets things done it's like you booking the scan is going to be able to see what is going on with the patient and i think just having more of a positive outlook because either way you have to do it so rather than thinking oh like this is so boring like just think okay me booking the scan it's gonna help um you know get to diagnosis of the patient um i think another tip i would say is be uh, or make the most of your placement i think i didn't do that when i was on surgery last year i think i only went into theaters once or twice um but i realized um in my hospital anyway once you say you're not really you know you don't want to do surgery they're kind of just like okay bye and like they don't they don't encourage you to go into theatres whereas if you say you're into fit um into surgery you want to do surgery and they will actually encourage you to go into theatres and i feel like it's a bit unfair like you should even if you don't want to do surgery in the future you should be able to have a chance to go into theatres and i feel like if i pushed more i probably could could have gone um but i was just kind of like because it was my first rotation I was just like, okay, if they don't want me to go into theatres, it's fine, like, I'm not going to push it. Whereas now, um, I'm on urology, which is surgery again, and um, I say, like, oh, I want to go and see, and they will let me go in, into theatres. So, it's something I wish I knew as an F1, just say that you want to go, and they will let you go, obviously, if the wards are good and I all the jobs are done go into theatres because if not you're kind of just like just chilling and not really doing much and it's like you may as well make the most of while you're there um and just like kind of submerse yourself into the placement because for some people that will be your only surgical rotation and that's it and some people are set on don't want to do surgery whereas others are like mm, not sure and maybe if you go into theatres you may actually see that you like surgery um so just kind of make the most of the placement um and if you've watched my a &E video like you would see that at the start i was very much like oh i hate a &E, i hate the writing this and that and because i had that negative attitude i did not enjoy a and &E, and that's why i had my breakdown and as soon as i was like okay i'm here let me make the most of it i ended up loving a and &E. so just try and go with a 
positive mindset even if it's a job that you don't want to do at the end of the day it's only four months and you will move on to another rotation and then that is that so just make the most of it you may not get like this rotation again this may be the only time you will do this speciality so you know like just put your all into it and just try and get the most that you can because i've realized like all these rotations what you put in is what you get out like if you want to do the bare minimum you can do the bare minimum as long as like all the jobs are done no one's going to tell you anything but if you want to like you know get involved with like theatres or all this or go to clinics or you know you can do that it's literally like down to you how you want the placement to or rotation to go um i think another thing i wish i knew talk to your co-workers like make friends with the people that are in your hospital um i've got a lot of medic friends um that are in different hospitals so i think initially i was like oh, i've got my friends i've got my medical friends they you know what i'm going through but no one's really really gonna understand what you're going through apart from the people that are in the same hospital as you as like the foundation doctors because they're literally going through exactly what you're going through because every hospital is different um and it just makes it makes the whole experience in life just better especially for me not being in london i'm away from home for five days and so most of my time is actually in bedford so even though i have my friends back home and I enjoy when I go back home. It's like, I can't, it doesn't make sense to be miserable in Bedford and just stay at home on my own um, for five days. Um, so like, try and do stuff as a year group or as a foundation, like F1, F2, like do things that you like as well. Like you could go for dinner, you could do sports. Like this year uh, for F2 I've done football, I've done badminton and it's just fun um, and so many people are willing to do stuff and it's just about asking and just talking and just actually getting to know people because I feel like if you just go work that's it go home like it's kind of a bit isolating so I'm not saying be besties with everyone at work but like you know just try and make a bit of an effort and also like just talking about your pay um I talked about it in my video about how much doctors earn and it's like why should it be a taboo subject we're all F1s everyone should be earning the same so like me asking is what made me realize that I didn't get paid for my induction week and if I didn't Asked, they would not have given me that money um so like just talk about pay like talk about how you guys are finding it and if you're struggling probably someone else is struggling too and like you don't have to be alone in this journey some people have had like really hard and difficult rotations and not enjoyed it and like sometimes feel like they can't talk to anyone and it's like there is probably someone out there in the hospital that's also suffering like just talk to someone you will feel better um so yeah and i think my final tip is put yourself first i think when you talk to the older doctors um when you're like trying to be like oh like a finish day or whatever they'll be like back in my day i finished day or back in my day i covered all the wards and it's like okay good for you well done but we're not back in your day we're in 2022 and it's different like you shouldn't be expected to stay late every day exception report it exception reporting is so important because when you exception report the department gets fined and so they ain't trying to get fined constantly they will make a way so that you will not finish late and it's just making sure that the work environment is a good one because if you're mentally not there or you're burnt out exhausted you're not going to be a good doctor so like put yourself first like do stuff that you like do stuff that you enjoy i think when i talked about my breakdown i wasn't going to the gym in that period and the gym is like a big part of my life and i think i realized that i need to go to the gym it helps my mental health um and like just doing stuff that i like 
um, during the week and not, you know, just being at work, home, work, home, um, makes a difference. Like, when you're happy, you become a better, a better doctor. It's good for yourself, it's good for your patients. So, like, put yourself first. You actually can't die for this job. Like, that is my biggest motto because if not, you'll just end up being miserable. Um, so, yeah, like, I think that's my main tip. Like, put yourself first you are the most important thing like have have a break during the work day make sure that you eat um especially me like i have to eat if i don't eat i'm i can't function properly like have your lunch break like if you don't get a lunch break it's actually important because you should be able to like you're entitled to a lunch break and yeah like after when you finish work do something that you enjoy in the evening because if not it's just gonna be work eat sleep repeat and you're not gonna be happy um i think it just makes a big difference when you are in a good place so yeah that is my main thing put yourself first do stuff that you enjoy make the most of your placement like try and socialize with your work mates so actually i think i realized like everyone's around my age um, so it just, you know, you feel like you're around your age, your age mates, which is nice. Um, and it's like, we're kind of all in this together. Like, don't feel like you can suffer. Um, don't feel like you're suffering on your own, like there is help. And if you feel like you can't talk to your workmates, then there is a consultant in the hospital that is in charge of like, well-being and stuff, who you can talk to if you feel like, anything in your life is going on and you also have your educational supervisor as well like, there's people that you can talk to so make the most of it and um, one more tip before i forget is um be on top of your portfolio <laughs> um even when it comes to like teaching and stuff so like you have 60 hours that you need to do and um it was kind of a mixture of like in my hospital they wasn't doing it weekly or foundation teaching and then if you have like nights and you're on, on call or whatever then you end up missing like a good two three four weeks of no teaching and then it comes to like you have a month left and you're like oh my god i have all these hours i need to catch up on um so just try and get stuff sorted as early as you can just so that you don't need to be stressed um, get familiar with the portfolio from early see what you actually need to do um, because nobody wants to be at the end of the end of the year like stressing about the portfolio and um, so just try and get as much as you can done as early as possible if you have any more questions like please drop it in the comments box below and don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you guys in the next video